It's been a fun little journey, hasn't it? It's been so fun exploring the word of the year and really diving in and and applying it to our own personal lives. That's one thing I absolutely love about this house, that we don't just get a bunch of information and then not know what to do with it and just be left to try and figure it out. You know, I remember going to church and hearing like these messages and I wanted to do what I was told. Like I wanted it, it made me hungry, but then I had no idea how to do it. You know, I had no idea how to put it practically in my life. And now it's just like, what the heck? We swim in it. We swim in just goodness that we don't ever have to be left wondering how to do things that we're hearing about. So I appreciate that very much. I appreciate the depth of the house and, you know, that we don't want just some milk, but we want the meats. I hear that Arby's is struggling to get the meats, so maybe we need to teach them how to get the meats. Turkey is an issue for Arby's. Maybe they got that fixed. I don't know. Um, uh, I wanted just to tell just a short little thing before I actually move on to what um, I'm going to talk about. Um, I actually had a dream, and it was such a cool dream. I've been just exploring it more and more and just uh, uh, trying to you know, practically see how, um, how it affects me in my own life. But, um, this is a really short, short condensed version. So basically, um, I was traveling northbound on I-35 and I had a pearl on my back. So, you know, just diving in a little bit northbound, heavenward, and I got my eye heavenward. And three is what? The Godhead. And five, does anybody know what five is? Grace. Yep. So I, I'm he going heavenward with my eye on the Godhead, being completely swallowed up by grace. And there's this beautiful pearl being formed. You know, but pearls, I don't know if y'all know this, pearls don't come from the slow, easy road. It comes from that place of stuff getting layered and tension. We've heard tension lately, haven't we? So don't get worried. When you feel the tension, just look northbound. Keep your eye northbound. And it's going to be good. His grace, his grace, his grace, his grace. I wonder just what we're going to learn about grace when we get to heaven. I do. I wonder. Like, I think we just so don't get it. I know I don't get it. I so don't get it. I get like, I get, I don't even, I can't even measure something small enough. Like, I know I don't get it. I, I get, I get that it's power. But what it really does for me, I think I can't see the scope. And I'm excited to find it, though. I'm excited to find out what it is, how it really empowered us more than what we knew. You know, I think we see in part, and I can't wait to see the bigger picture. But, you know, I think um, to just in, in a Peabody brain, if we can just get it down small, I think it's just a place of being able to not lean on my own kind of power in any way and being able to really just say, God, I can't even do this without you. And, you know, more of the leaning in that we can give, the more of the grace we get to fall into. You know, it's just like, oh, we get to just keep falling in. And so, you know, I don't know about you, but I determined a long time ago that having my way was overrated. And I really don't want it. You know, let me just be honest. Most of the time that I fought for my own way, I found out uh, that probably actually wasn't the best way. And so the more that I can let go 
of my own way and I can get Yahweh's, then that's true. That's true joy right there. That's goodness. So just a reminder, everybody, keep your eyes northbound on the Godhead. Empowered by grace. And you'll have a pearl on your back. Everybody else gets to enjoy the pearl. You know what I mean? Everybody else gets to see the beauty. We, we always laugh because, um, you know, like Teresa and I will be like, well, don't wear that because you like it. Wear it because I like it and I'm the one looking at you. So, you know, I, I, I like that. You know, I may not like that color, but you like that color so you can see me in it. Then you can enjoy that. That's what the pearl is. Pearl is enjoyed by others. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Where do we want to go? I've been, I've been studying on the old bees. They are really a fascinating, fascinating little creature. So I want to talk a little bit about it. We've been on the honeycomb and just the, uh, the power and the strength of the community, the power and the strength that we all have together. And, um, you know, we're just all better together. Yeah. We're just are. We... We're just not that really great on our own. I mean, we are great. You know what I mean. But what we can what we can take as a community, man, we can go a really, really far, 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 far place. And, you know, I think, um, has everybody given up the need for independence? Yeah. I'm wondering what the percent... Uh, participation was there. I wonder if we're like at a 50-50 or we at like a, I'm going to go 70-30. I'm just going to give us the benefit of the doubt. Just at least 70-30. 70-30. You know, independence really, it's really small. Independence makes you really, really small. If you ever want to grow really big, you learn how to be inter interdependent. Interdependent, of course, on the Godhead, that goes without saying, but inter interdependent with one another. It is letting people see into the very depths of you. And you know what's amazing? Is they don't find gross stuff. You know, they just don't. They, they find amazing things. I love that little prophetic thing that we did, I don't know, was it like a week or two ago? And uh, we were talking about the gold, digging out the gold, like in community, that's what we're experiencing. We're experiencing all the gold in you. You know, we're not picking out everything that's bad about you. No, it's OK. There's this beautiful thing in you. Let's get it to shine more. You know, let's let that thing come up more. And that's the place that whenever we're all operating in that place of vulnerability and just being real and authentic, man, that is like, that is just power. That is power. The enemy hates vulnerability. He hates it. If he can keep you by yourself hiding, then you are a playground for him. It's like a kiddie playground. Because he can get you with anything. Has anybody been duped by something really stupid that the enemy will say to you? I mean, like, it's just stupid. Like, I don't know. Throw some out. What are some stupid ones? Come on. Everybody hates me. Yeah. What else? Can't do nothing right. What else? Gonna look stupid. Mm -hmm. I bet everybody has had those same thoughts at some point. I bet it. I bet it. And you know, he he has nothing new. He's just doing the same old thing. He's just seeing if you're gonna bite that day. And so you know what I love about community? People see it. People can see it. You know, in our house, we can just walk through the house. So I'll be like, hey. What, what's wrong? What do you got going on right there? Something's not right. Are you okay? You know, I love that. That is that safety right there. That 
I went, I went from never being known, definitely not understood, to now, like, so many people know me, so many people get me, and so many people know how to help me whenever I'm all jacked up. I need it. I need it. So just remember, if you are really hungry to increase your level of vulnerability, look around at everybody. Look around. Those are your teammates. They love you. They care for you. They want to see you be the best you, and they need you. We really need you. We really, really need you. I love um, what Teresa was talking about, or I don't know who was talking about it. It gets so confusing on who says what. But um, that um, if you have weeds in your garden, I have weeds in my garden. You know, since we're all so connected, we're all sharing, we all have our own yards, right? But we're all sharing a big yard. And and this is a, a community yard. And so then if the enemy comes in and if he gets, if he comes sneaking in and he gets you, then chances are there's going to be somebody else with that same thing that he starts getting. See, that's why we need the intercessors that are like, hey, hey, I cry wolf. There's something trying to come in. And if you're real and vulnerable, then you can be willing to say, hey, this is really what I have going on. And you you want to do that. Trust me, you want to. We need you to want to. So just say, Daddy, give me the wants to. So if you don't want to, he'll help you get the wants to. Well, I wanted to talk just a little bit about bees and honey. Honey, the kind you eat, not the loved one next to you, but the kind that you can eat. Because what is a beehive? What are they making? Duh, honey, honey, honey is a really, really cool cool substance. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go over some facts because you're going to have to have your metaphor hat on. So everybody get in your pocket, get your metaphor hat and put it on. Perfect. Don't take it off. Keep it on. You can just wear it out of here too, if you want to. Um, so this is, this is something really, really cool. So a single bee produces one and a twelfth teaspoon of honey during its entire lifespan. So, look. Okay? Let's do this. So, I don't have a one-twelfth, okay? But this one here is a one-sixteenth, and this is a one-eighth. So, it's in the middle of that, which is a baby, that's just a little tiny amount. Just a little tiny amount for that little bee. So imagine your entire lifespan working every day, nonstop, and this, this is the sum of your labor. That's it right there, that little guy. That's it. So, you know, by that little bee self, that feels like, man, this feels like really, this doesn't feel like nothing. It feels really inconsequential at best. This isn't even enough to wet my whistle. This isn't enough to sweeten nothing. This little thing here is nothing on its own. Would we say that? I would say that. You know, whenever you look at your lives, how many of you see your life as this little thing here? Or do you see yourself the way God made you? See, there's something really, really amazing that... 
we can do a lot with just us and God. We can't, we can do a lot. But imagine us with a community and God. See, everything that I can do with just he and I will not be fully expressed. I will never live up to my full abilities and capabilities outside of doing it with other people. I, I love that God proved the value of family just in the way that God had operates. I love that he, he could have started the universe any way he, any way. He got to pick how he started. And he started with being called father. And so father, if you're going to be father, you got to have what to be a father? You got to have something else under you, right? You got to have some other units to come and do life with. So imagine... Imagine your one life, if all that you ever think to do with your one life is just do what you do by yourself. I want to do bigger things. I, I don't want, now I don't want to make light of or belittle any of the things that we do for God, because y'all know my heart, right? I'm trying to make a bigger, I'm trying to make a bigger illustration that God has really called us to be so knitted together that imagine if I have this part, you have this part, you have this part. Imagine all of our parts coming together and what that actually brings. So, um, so just to put the little uh, bee into perspective, on average, a honeybee produces the one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey over the course of its life. Just to put that into perspective, two tablespoons of honey would be enough to fuel a bee's entire flight around the world. Are y'all ready to see the two tablespoons? That right there. That, that just that l little thing right there. All the way around the world. You know, whenever I think about, think about a beehive. Y'all know how many bees are in a beehive? Do you, have y'all seen those? Have you seen them? So... A bee colony or a beehive is approximately 30,000 to 60,000 bees. Did you say a lot of homies? Yep, that's a lot of homies. So a typical beehive can produce anywhere from 30 to 100 pounds of honey a year. To produce a single pound of honey, a colony of bees must collect nectar from approximately 2 million flowers and fly over 55,000 miles. This amounts to a lifetime's worth of work for around 800 bees. How, imagine how far we can go with all of us doing our maximum capacity. See, when it's just us, we can do this. But whenever we are multiplied and we keep multiplying and we keep multiplying and we're all bringing the best us, we're all bringing all that we have, then we actually have a product that can feed other people. We're not just trying to get our own sweetener. I'm not just trying to get my own toast done. I got some other toasts that I can get done. So I feel like God is really, I love just what he's talking about, just the need for us to be knitted in together. And 
you have to be really, really careful at what breaks you out of connection with your people. What is it for you? You need to know it because if you don't know it, then you're going to keep getting tripped up. And then one minute you'll be all in. The next minute you'll be looking out. One minute you'll be in. The next minute looking out. And then you go back and forth and really can't ever get deeply connected because the enemy knows just what works for you to get you taken outside and beat up one. It's maybe that, oh, they don't get me or they're going to judge me or I failed and so people are going to know it. You need to know what works for you that takes you outside a community. <clears throat> the world is hungry. They need some sweeteners. And we can be the sweeteners. But if we're just going to do all the work on our own, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of energy with not quite the fruit that we're hoping for. Remember, look at your teammates. Say, I need you, teammate. I need you to be your best you. I need you to come and be present. Be present. We need each other. I need you. Are you ready for another fun fact? Each colony has a unique odor so the bees always know where home is. That's cool, right? You smell. <laughs> we smell. We have a smell. We have a smell. That's why it's so important that you find the tribe with your smell. Because you smell. You need to smell and you need to go get with some other smells. You know, imagine, like I think about the prodigals a lot. I think about them. Of course, I have some myself. And so I think about them. But one thing that I know that they know that they all know is that they were loved. They were loved. We have a scent of loving people. You have a scent. What do you want your scent to be like? Daddy wants for us to smell really, really good. And so what, whatever we ingest becomes what we smell like. What are you ingesting? Are you ingesting, ah, oh, oh, you're worthy. You're beautiful. You're worthy. Are you ingesting, oh my gosh, man, Cheryl is amazing. Whenever I think of Cheryl, I just think of all the ways that she encourages people. I think of just the Deborah and her. Whenever I look at Bailey, I think about, man, Bailey, she impacts people so much with art, and she is such an amazing mom. I mean, there's so many things. When I look around, when I look around at you, what I'm perceiving will produce a scent around me. You can't hide it. You can try and hide it, but it will come out with things that you say if you don't pay attention to what you're looking at. You got to pay attention. I love whenever we were talking, whenever we were singing about being able to gaze. See, we have such an amazing position that we get to gaze upon the face of God. And so then we can't, we can't say, I want to gaze in your eyes, but then I want to gaze at your faults. You faults, you faults. Those don't work. Those don't work. I don't know if you know that or not. That doesn't work. So I love that passage of scripture that is like, hey, dude, you know, you can be looking at that old speck over there, but you got something poking me with something coming out of yours. How you see, how you perceive affects those around you, and it gives a scent. 
So I want to smell good. If you don't, if you don't know your tribe, I just have to say you've got to find them because God has something for you to do in your life and he wants you to do it with other people. Ready for another one? Yes. This one's fun. When the honeybees return to the hive, which they find easily because they have an impeccable sense of smell, they do a little dance to communicate with the other honeybees. That dance helps the other bees find where the flowers are. Think of that. You got scouts. You got scouts out there. They're doing it. You're coming in. You're coming in from your working. And people are dancing, saying, hey, go over there. Get that over there. Go get that. That's where it all is. That's what we're supposed to be doing with our lives. Like, imagine, see, the enemy hates, he hates unity. Because imagine if we're out and about skirting around and we see, oh, man, the kingdom needs to be released over there. You come flapping your little wings back over here. We're all dancing, dancing. And then we're telling you, hey, go over there. This is what needs the kingdom. And off you go. And you go over there and you let off your scent and come back. And we just keep repeating that. We get to dance to teach them where to go. How amazing is that? Is God not insane? Imagine that. You get to do a little dance to teach them. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. That is so amazing. I love him. I love his ways. He is awesome. Okay. So, talked about we needed each other, right? Right? Did I clear that up? Okay. So, so this is fun. So you, you know that they're going around to be, I mean, to flowers, right? And they're getting stuff out of flowers, right? Y'all know that? Okay. So to get the nectar, honeybees pull the liquid from the flower with its long tube-like tongue. It then stores the honey in one of its two stomachs. Think of the stomach as a kangaroo pouch for honey. It makes it not so gross when I tell you the rest of this, okay? Okay. Because who likes honey? Who likes honey? I love honey. Okay. So when the honeybee returns to the hive, she opens her mouth, and a worker bee comes up and sucks the nectar out of her stomach, which is a honey pouch. It's not a stomach. We'll call it a honey pouch. The worker bee then chews on the nectar for a while to fill it full of enzymes. In other words, she's turning those natural complex sugars in the nectar to simple sugars that makes the honey more digestible and keeps bacteria away. So a bee can't even get the own nectar out of their stomachs without another bee. You get it? You got your hat on, don't you? You got your hat on. So see, you know, I love that we're in a prophetic house that somebody gets something and then you don't even have all it takes to figure it out. Somebody else comes along and they do a little addition and they pour in their scent and then produce a different product. How fun is that? See, that's, I love, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've had something just going through my head over and over and I can't seem to get to the other side. Like I can't figure out what God is saying to me. And then I throw it out and then somebody else is like, well, yeah, there's this and this. And I was studying this and I was studying this. And it's like, oh my gosh, everything just goes, Poof. you know, everything just, Poof. it gets bigger. You know, God always has meant for us to do things with community. He always has. So they can't even get their own stuff and get it all digested without each other. So just, just say that over yourself. I need somebody else. I can't even get the own nectar out of my stomach. Yes, the own sweetness. Uh, it says that nectar is 80% water. 
So the bees have to work together to pull some of the moisture out of the chewed up enzymes, the enzyme goodness. To do this, they spread the soon to be honey over the honeycombs. This helps the water evaporate much more quickly and leaves a yummy, gooey honey. So think of this. All the little, all the little honeybees are working together to provide everything that's needed for everybody in the hive. They're the ones, and they're not doing it by themselves. They're not like, well, no, this is my own, honey. I went and got this stuff. You go get your own nectar. This is my nectar. See, that's a lot of times what the church is like. You know, instead of, I'm going to go get this and bring this in for the good of everybody. Isn't that fun? I love this. It says, actually, these bees mean business when it comes to drying out the honey. They don't just sit back and let Mother Nature take its course with the evaporation process. Heck no. These girls know how to get things done. After the honey is spread out over the honeycombs, the worker bees get to flapping those wings to help speed up the drying process. Listen, I have a funny little, just a, oh, it's just a little, a little uh, funny thing, a funny tidbit. All the worker bees are females. All of them. All of the bees that are getting stuff, they're all female. Men only have one thing to do in the bee kingdom. Just There's just one thing they do in the bee kingdom. Just one thing. I'm not going to say what it is. Y'all can use your heads to figure it out. But the women are the ones doing all the work. So I'm just saying. It's just a funny. Doesn't mean anything. It's just funny. It's just funny. That's it. There can only be one queen bee. And she eats royal jelly. So the queen bee or the royal jelly? It's her own jelly that only she gets. It has a whole different, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. So there can only be one, one queen, one God for our hive that gets the royal stuff. That's fun. What the heck? Think of that. Can y'all, are y'all using your metaphoric brains? He longs to be the one thing for all of us. What's really cool is that everything for the entire hive is going to protect the queen. Everything is about the queen. Protecting the queen, getting the queen what they need. It's like everything serves the queen. All the bees come in to serve the queen. All of us come in to serve the king. The one and only king. So it says, this is another really cool tidbit. Honey is one of the few foods known to have an eternal shelf life. Eternal shelf life. It never goes bad. What you're producing with your own life has the eternal shelf life. It never goes bad, and it will echo through the halls of heaven. What you do with your life. They, they actually have found, um, they have found honey in tombs thousands of years old, and it tastes just like regular honey. Mm -hmm. The only time that um, it can go bad is if uh, water gets in there or another substance gets in there and then it starts the fermenting process. No mixtures. There can be no mixtures in God's kingdom. I love that he, he will have no other. And... If you have other things in your life that are not him, it ferments. It ferments your walk. It ferments your heart. It ferments your eyes. It ferments the way you see. But you keep purity 
and you can have it eternally. I want to talk just a uh, just a second about. Um, I want to just to park on the contaminants for just a second because, um, you know, I think whenever you start talking about unity in um, the church, it really is a big deal that um, you pay close attention to your heart and what comes in about people and about things. You know, there's no such thing as, um, you know, whenever you have thoughts that you don't capture and do something with, those things will begin to um, start getting in to your heart. You know, I, I know just personally, um, I practice this. I'm not 100 perfect at it. But I practice doing something with the thoughts that come that are not godly. I don't just say, oh, that's a weird thought or, oh, that was, I don't want to have that. I actually have to confront the thought and say, I don't, I'm not receiving that. And what's funny, the moment that I say, I'm not receiving that, that's not mine. No, thank you. It's gone. It doesn't, it has no effect. But have you ever noticed, if you don't, have you noticed that before you know it, a little while later, that same thought will come again? Sometimes those thoughts have a feeling that comes with it. You know, if you can learn how to capture the thoughts and don't take ownership and say, no, thank you, then you'll find that it doesn't have any connection on your soul. But you do have, but it requires doing something with it. And... It really is a big deal because it affects us more than what we know. It affects us about ourselves. You know, you can just have one thing like you're not caring. Okay. Well, then the next thing, whenever you go, whenever you go to do something for somebody, you'll remember that thought. You're not caring. Oh, well, I better do more then to prove that I am caring. And then you go due north from the pure product that you were doing with God. You have to be willing to get all the little things that come in because they will take you from your pure place with him. And, you know, I know that I'm not the only one. I know that other people, you know, have it too. Maybe one or two of y'all in here have thoughts that you need to not take ownership for. So I just want to encourage you that not all your thoughts are yours. And you can actually say, I don't receive that thought. I'm not receiving that. That one's not mine. And sometimes it just helps you to just know that you can say no thank you to that. Because the enemy is just trying to see if today is going to be a day that you're going to bite and believe whatever he's sent in your way. So just remember that there's no such thing. You can't be passive in your walk with God. You can't be passive in your thought life. You can't be passive in your approach with dealing with the enemy because he's not being passive. I promise you that he's anything but passive. And so if we try and be passive and we have an enemy that isn't, well, somebody else is going to lose ground and somebody else will gain ground. So just saying. You can pick which one you want to be. Um, oh, it's getting late. Uh, let's see. So honey is the only food that includes everything humans need to sustain life, including water, enzymes, minerals, vitamins, and it's the only food that contains, are y'all ready? Just bear with me, okay? Penocrembrin. Yeah, did you feel that? That was it. That was it, right which is an antioxidant associated with improved brain functioning. Mm -hmm. We need that. I'm just saying, if, have I done anything but encouraged you to go eat honey? <laughs> go eat some honey. There is another thing. It says to help soothe allergies, 
take one teaspoon of honey per day. The honey helps your body develop a resistance to pollen, which helps reduce overall allergies. However, you want to eat honey in your own region to help fight off the allergies for that region. So just think of that. If you, take, if you can take out the physical thoughts of eating honey and allergies, if we can take that and put that over here, what is it that God wants to give you for your region? What is it that he wants for you to ingest of him and carry something to the regions? See, that's the beauty of being his representatives, his ambassadors, Perfect, Re free, frequently asked questions related to June 2021. That's what that is. <laughs> so the beautiful thing about an ambassador is that wherever you're going, you have, you have say over that region. You're coming as the kingdom of God, as a representative, and you get to say what happens in that region. You have, you have a right to claim status. This is my this is my land and you must go. But so y'all all have a land to take and you have a rightful place to take it. It's yours. The kingdom of God says that it is ours and we can have it. Wherever our feet tread, what happens? Come on. Come on. What happens? What is that? Yes, you take the territory. You take the territory. What land do you want? What land do you want? Worship? Yeah. What land do y'all want? Huh? Families? Yep. What was yours? What did you say? Family? Did you say family? What are some others? Yeah. Arts? The mountains? Yep. We have a right to them, huh? What was that? Yes, expansion. That's good. We have the right to have it. Not to mention honey is extremely good for medicinal purposes. It soothes a sore throat. Heals burn wounds. Your own honey heals hearts. Your own honey has the potential to heal the broken. Honey, it's cool. Think of this little tribe together as a powerful community, what we can do with one another, what we get to produce with the fruit of our lives, feeds others. We put off a smell I want to put off a really, really sweet aroma. Do y'all want to put off a really sweet aroma? Daddy is really, really, really into what we produce with our lives. It's a big deal to him. It's a big deal. And so I, I personally, whenever I look around at the quality of people that we have and the quality of your hearts, the quality of your caring, the quality of your passionate hearts, I see that he's really entrusted us with a lot. And just as a leader, I find it pretty, um, I find it pretty awe-inspiring. Whenever, you know, I, I see everybody coming and how much God has completely radically changed everybody in here. I mean, there's not one person in here that I haven't seen God do something in your lives. And, you know, God is wanting to do you, to do with your life, with, to use your life for others. He wants for us to pour into others with the same way that we've been radically transformed. And so we have a pure product to give to the nations. You have a pure product. You get to choose that. I get to choose it. I get to choose with my own life 
if I'm going to do things that serve others and feed others, or if I live it selfishly and choose to only do things my own way. But we all affect one another. And so you just have to remember when you look at each other that you're looking at somebody that is, you know, they're Jesus in human form. Each person, it, Jesus in you, I get to treat you as I would treat Jesus. That really makes my uh, level of honor go up. I don't see people as things that they need to fix or get better. No, God is in them. And so it's same level of respect I have for him, I have to have for each other. I love that um, scripture that it talks about how um, people unknowingly encounter angels thinking they're just people. And, you know, I wonder if that happens with us. Do we see them? Do we pay attention to them? Do we serve them? Do we love them? Or do we just get annoyed and walk on? Our lives produce something. What do you want your life to produce? You have the great opportunity to heal hearts. You have the great opportunity to be the healing balm for people. And it's already in you, and Dad wants to just use you to do that for others. So we make some good honey around here. Don't forget. All right, Cheryl, you want to come up? So good. Man, he did, he thought about everything when he created the world. He was like, let me make this very minute detail, show you my ways and my process. Um, I kept having to go back. I read part of this verse on Sunday in 2 Corinthians 9. Um, I'll read the first part really quick, but then the second part is what I wanted to get to. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First, he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. For when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. And so this is that process that she's explaining happens with the bees. And he wants to happen in our lives is that when we say, I'll give of my time, I'll give of my money, I'll give of my resources, I'll give of my skills, um, that we actually get to have people draw out the good in us, the gold in us, and it benefits other people, it blesses their lives to the point the word says that it actually caused them to give thanks and praise God. And so it's really, really fun um, process to be a part of, and I always encourage people if you want to even just get to experience that process. This is me right now calling out that amazingness in you to practice coming out and practice. Um, ask Holy Spirit what seems like a risk to you, um, and he will meet you there. He, uh, There's no shame for him in this process. He wants you to experience the benefit of actually experiencing the truth that it is better to give than to receive. And um, I just can guarantee you that it will bless you more than you know. So we've got a couple ways that you can practice. Um, we've got a box back there. You can put cash or checks in an envelope. Notate on that envelope how you're giving. Um, and then if you want to give electronically, we also have our website. It's onelifeok.com. So with that, we're going to stand and do our offering decree. You ready? Today, I offer to you what you so freely gave to me. I give you a portion as a declaration of my love. I mark this gift with purpose. I mark it with destiny. Papa, thank you for the ability to make wealth. Give me wisdom in how I am to use it. Papa, I want my life to be lived out loud for others to see. Grant me access wherever I go. 
Give me increase in my abilities. Give me favor in the area of my personal influence. Intersect me with open hearts in a new way this year. My life will resemble heaven in my ability to love and serve others. My life will reflect your radical generosity. I trust you and you alone as provider, protector, sustainer of life. I know you are the God of more than enough. This year will be marked by your blessings, by your favor, by your movements, by your increase. We declare blessings on this house, blessings on our hands, blessings on our minds, blessings on our creativity, blessings in our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just thank you tonight, Jesus, that um, you are just confirming the purpose in your design that we were made um, to be with each other and with you. And so I just ask tonight that you would just begin to unfold and strengthen bonds that you have already built. Um, and to the people that are crying out to know this experience of what it's like to have no needs among them to experience true family in the way that you made it. I just ask that you would give them that in Jesus name. Amen.